Hi, I'm Kathy Polis, and I am the assessor for task nine for the PDCP program, differentiation two. I'm gonna walk you through and try to help you to better understand steps of this task. So the differentiation two task is a follow-up to the, the differentiation one. There are six pieces of this task and the total points are 20. There's a cover sheet, a student characteristic and needs page, learning objectives, description of the methods and materials you're using, progress monitoring log, and a summary report with a reflection. So to start with the task cover sheet, I can safely say that the more, the better. Some of you have just been listing that you teach a sixth grade reading class. I need a little more information than that so I've given you a description below the demographics here of some of the things that might be on a cover sheet. You can list your ESC students and their exceptionalities, including gifted. You can list your ESOL students and what language they speak. It's helpful for the assessor to know if you have a Haitian speaker and a Portuguese speaker and six Spanish speakers in your classroom. Um, a little bit about their socioeconomic status would be helpful. Um, maybe a general overall FSA level. So if most of the class is level two, you can say something like that. Um, break it down between males and females. And then anything else that might describe the environment of your classroom, whether it be that majority of the kids are in a single family home, um, if you have any students in transition, if they live with their grandparents, um, anything that might give the assessor a better understanding of what you're dealing with on a daily basis. The next page is your student care characteristics and needs page. And under the characteristics and needs, there is a section for lunch status. If you could just put free or reduced or whether they're full lunch, that's helpful. And when it comes to the type of family, single parent, parent home or a joint household, or if there's a grandparent raising, or even if they're a student in transition, homeless status. That's helpful as well. And then the standardized test results, if you could list their reading and math breakdown, I would appreciate that. So when it comes to their characteristics, anything that you can give that would give a nice round picture of that student. Next part of the characteristics and needs is the section um, with the chart that says student needs. So in that chart, the first section of it is asking you for the learning style inventory data. Um, this you can get from your differentiation one task that you already completed. Um, or is the student a kinesthetic learner? Or are they an auditory learner, visual? Anything that you gathered from that differentiation one task can be placed in this section. The next section is the interest attitudinal data. These, this basically is giving the assessor a bit of information on what really motivates that student. Are they, do they do best with um, a video game or some sort of computer program? Or is something like a manipulative, hands-on, tactile, more their thing? So if you could List whatever you can there that would give the assessor a good understanding of what that student, what learning style that student um, works best with. Okay, and then we have our learning objectives. Now I know I've emailed a lot of people about learning objectives because if I go in and see that your task is not really at the level that it should be for, um, the learning objectives, it doesn't have a measurement, I will usually email you and let you know so that I, before I score it, I have um, that right and type. So what, what I'm looking for um, in a learning objective is a short-term goal, something that maybe you're just working on that nine weeks or maybe just for till interim but it doesn't have to be a goal that they're working on all year long. It can be a goal that you think they might be able to meet in a short amount of time. It could be a long-term goal, 
but you're not going to see it's as much progress probably in the amount of time that you're logging their progress. So a short-term goal is probably best. Um, it really has to be measurable, some sort of measurement. Are you expecting the student to perform it at a certain level of accuracy? Or are you looking for a number of attempts that they've been successful at? Whatever you think matches that goal, make sure there's some form of measurement. And on top of the measurement, a time period, an ending point. Are you looking for it, them to reach 80% accuracy in six weeks? Are you looking for them to um, be successful four out of five times every week? Something that gives a measurement in time and accuracy. You'll also be using this with your methods and materials page. Um, and this methods and materials page is very important that you match these two things together. Um, methods and materials will be what you're using to reach this goal. So keep that in mind when you go on to your methods and materials and are choosing what you're going to be, what strategy you're going to be using with your student. Um, and this can be the same goal as for the two students. You're going to be choosing two students here. So you can use the same goal, but just make sure you choose a different differentiation strategy to use for each of them. Um, that's really important because otherwise it's really not differentiation, okay? Description of methods and materials. So um, it's really important that these are distinct for each student. Both students should not have um, dibbles written next to both of them as the method that you're using. Make sure you choose something specific for that student and their needs that you identified on the first page. Um, also, make sure you're not getting confused with accommodations and differentiation strategies. A lot of people are saying separate setting or um, a separate test site, and that's really an accommodation. So a differentiation strategy would be something like I listed here. Um, think alouds, um, maybe make predictions, things like um, AVID strategies are great differentiation strategies that you can use for different students. They can be working on the same lesson, but just working on some, using a different type of um, platform to reach that, that end goal. So I put an example here. One of the examples would be a math manipulative for student one could be that they are using a computer program with a headset, they're an auditory learner. And maybe student, um, or, or a, I'm sorry, let me back up, a math manipulative for student one and student two might use a computer set with a headset. Um, that would be something where you're reaching, touching on their individual learning style, but also um, using an individual strategy for them. Um, something that I think of a lot when I think of differentiation is maybe learning stations. A lot of times learning stations, I know with COVID, we're really not using learning stations right now, but maybe in the future we will be. Um, there's various things that work for various students. And, and as you get to know your students and form those reports, you'll figure that out. Um, make sure you don't list as a differentiation strategy, a textbook or paper and pencil, or even verbal praise, because these are things that all teachers are using with all students. And so for the most part, praise is something that we're doing all day long, I know, and it's, it, Yes, it really is a motivator for students, but it's really not a differentiation strategy, okay? For the progress monitoring log. So once you've determined your, um, your methods and materials and your goal that you're trying to get them to, to reach using those methods and materials, that differentiation strategy, you're then gonna start recording on your log um, how they have, are progressing with this. So, there's going to be multiple entries over a period of time, whatever time you gave yourself to reach for the, for the student to reach that goal. Um, and you're going to be recording that same strategy and how they progressed with that strategy. Don't list a bunch of other things like, oh, today we used the textbook. I, it, that does not really um, matter when it comes to the differentiation to um, progress. You're pretty much just listing the, the strategy that you've chosen and showing 
how that strategy has helped the student to, to reach success. Um, make sure in your results column that there's some form of measurement there, whether it's this five out of six tries or the 80% accuracy. And also make sure you list your observation. You can put whatever you want in this column. The more info, the better. Um, maybe you can say the student was becoming more fluent or the student seemed way less anxious using the strategy versus the, the way that I was teaching it with everybody else. Um, and also, we also need the student's reaction. The student's reaction is really important on this because we want to know, are they getting frustrated? Is this something that you then had to change up and switch your strategy to a second strategy, which you could have listed on your materials and methods page? Or is it something that's really helping them to reach a, a better level of, of confidence and you are really seeing success with it? Okay, next thing. Summary report and reflection. So the summary report and reflection is, I think there's about four questions there. I don't have it in front of me, but make sure you answer all of the questions because a lot of times one of the questions will carry over to the next page and um, candidates will um, not see it and they'll leave that blank. So then I'll email you and let you know there's a blank there. You, you didn't answer all your questions. Um, so make sure you don't miss all the questions. Um, and also record what your mentor has said to you. There's a lot to be said about self-reflection. And if the mentor has said something and you can give your take on that, what, what you took away from what your mentor has told you, um, that's important to record here. because This shows us that you're really truly understanding what different, differentiation is and that you really have a good grasp on it. Um, when it comes to the summary report, it's, it's pretty much like a journey. You're describing each step of what happened and then you're eventually getting to the end result. So look at it as a journey and the steps of the journey and the final, the final ending of it. Um, and don't forget your definite, different, definition of differentiation, what it is and what it is not to you. These are really my favorite part to see because it really shows me that you really have a true understanding of your students' needs and what you're doing and can do to help them to feel successful. So if you need any help at all, please reach out to me. You know you can always email me. Many of you do email me and I, and I really appreciate that some of you just email me to tell me that you're finished with your task and you're ready to be scored. And I appreciate that too, because as a teacher myself, um, we get busy and sometimes we forget to go check. And so I don't, I don't mind at all if you email me and say, hey, I'm finished, I'm uploaded, can you go and score me? Um, I may not get to it that day, but I will try to get to it within a couple of days of you um, emailing me. So let me know if I can be of any assistance. I'm always happy to help you. Have a great day.